and uh, Navarro is going to be on your left, Georgia Du on your right. Now, we say that because we have to remind ourselves uh, we're looking at this from a completely opposite angle from you. So, in fact, for us, Navarro is on the right, uh, but uh, the TV cameras are, are pointing towards us because that's fencer. the side the referee is standing on. Absolutely. There's another fence the Greek fence in her first last eight appearance. She's made a top 16 exactly like Chloe fox -Kitoma. She's made a top 16 before, but this is her first last eight. Yeah, a few satellite medals for uh, Navarro, three golds and uh, a bronze, but no medals for uh, Georgia Du. Uh, but uh, they've uh, got some form in women's sabre over the years. Absolutely, the, the Greeks have started to produce more good fences now, and especially in women's sabre. And I think one of the things with Despina is she's a, an amazing athlete. You know, her work in the gym is incredible. She's unbelievably powerful and explosive. Her technique still, still needs a lot of honing, and I know her coach, Nikos Tsikas, who's a really good guy and a good coach, is working very hard on that, and she's got a lot of development still to come, so I think that that's a positive thing. That's not a criticism, because it means she's in a top eight, but with a lot of things still to develop. So she doesn't really need to be a better, more powerful, stronger athlete than she is. She now needs to develop her the technical side of her game. Aratheli Navarro is a very good, controlled, technical fencer, got nice timing in the middle. She's made top eight the Europeans two or three times, I think. She's and you talked about the fencer. Spanish. You've talked about the Spanish uh, Federation really putting, uh, uh, quite, uh, getting quite a lot of support, uh, financial support to really bring their fencing on. Absolutely, that's a beautiful parry cross from Navarro there. Drew the tempo and parried it. Yeah, they they've just really upped the up the ante a little bit in their training for the women's saber group. Um, they've got a number of fencers who are working really really hard in the in the national centre at INF, and they've brought in a new coach. Um, it's a lot sort of stricter, more um, exacting training regime. And we saw four of them in the 64, and two of whom made it to the 16, and of those, Aratheli progressed further and made it into the last eight. And she's currently dominating this fight, 6-2. And this is a really vulnerable area for the Greek fencer. She's, because of her technical flaws with a hand, she's a little bit vulnerable to being hit on preparation in the middle she comes forward with really nice timing with the legs but the hand isn't in the right place and therefore the, the technically superior fencer who's also got good timing can hit on preparation in the middle of the piece well 8-2 the lead for the Spaniard uh, she's in command at the moment now John look I, I've had you up here all day today you've done a fantastic job and I, I thank you for that but I really must give you the opportunity to talk about what you do because you've got a great set up not only with your work with British fencing which is fantastic but also at Truro uh, an unusual place uh, southwest of the reaches of, uh, of Great Britain and you've got a fantastic setup where you've got not just British athletes but athletes from around the world yeah we have a, a great club down there I've, I've been there well I started fencing there when I was 15 so that's a few centuries ago now and I've been head coach since 2007 at the club there and uh, We've got a really good setup and lots of good young fencers coming through, and we provide a lot of fences to the British junior and cadet team. Um, yeah, and it's, it's going extremely well. We have a great coaching team down there with Balash Kurut, Hungarian coach, Nikolai Dinev, Bulgarian coach, working alongside me there. And yeah, it's going really well. We've, we've got a good club, and I, I also coach the, the men's and women's teams up in London, so I commute up and down. For those of you that don't know, Truro is down in the far southwest of England in Cornwall, 300 miles from London, so I commute up every week spend two and a half days in Cornwall and uh, the rest of the week up in London. Yeah, doing a fabulous job there. And, and uh, I've, had, I've, had some, I've had some people come up to me say that, John Southfield, he's OK, he's a nice, nice bloke. And they're not just Brits. Karim is my agent, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back to the action here. It's the uh, third quarter final here at the uh, Oil World Cup, the start of the season for the women's Sabreurs. And uh, you have to say that Navarro is in control and she has started this second period uh, as she means to go on. A little bit more movement. Yeah, I think Nikos' advice to his fencer Despina was to try and be a little bit more defensive, a bit more controlled at the beginning um, and then take over the attack if she can and push more up and down the piece because she's a very good athlete, very good, uh, powerful, explosive athlete. So she can take it out of the middle where the technique is so much more important. And she has a, a little bit better chance, I think. Araceli doesn't agree with that referee's decision. I, I actually do agree with it. I think the Greek fencer went earlier with the lunge attack and preparation.
Well, we get the review. And don't forget, even though Araceli Navarro is a very experienced fencer, made a number of top eights at uh, European Championships and World Cups. She hasn't won a World Cup medal or a Grand Prix medal, so there's still pressure and adrenaline for her as well, not just for the Greek fencer. You can see that now. She's starting to get a tiny little bit stressed, just going a little bit faster in the middle. And this would play into the hands of the, the Greek fencer. She's a very good athlete with good timing. Let's see that again. Arthali just went a bit too fast, a bit too early. She's letting Espina Giordiardi back into this fight. I think if she just controlled her preparation and watched and reacted to the other fencer's action, then she'd do far better. But also the flunge there, I think, uh, meant that uh, Arthali Navarro hit below the yeah, target area. That's right, absolutely, which doesn't register anything below the waist. You can see the silvery grey coloured jacket, which is the, the target area of the body and the arms, and then the, the mask as well, the head. Anything below that won't register as a, a valid hit. Navarro on the attack, just falls short, and the Greek fencer reposts. Suddenly this is a match. Yeah. It was 8-2, now 9-7, so 5-1 to the Greek fencer in the second period. And it's a combination of the Greek fencer just being a bit more careful at the beginning of each hit. So you can see a slower step there at the beginning, and then the powerful lunge, not rushing on the first step. Well, and also Arathelli Navarro being a little bit more tense and rushing a little bit more. The, the referee calling that one and uh, a video appeal called from uh, Georgia Du. It's interesting, isn't it? Because um, I think at the beginning of the day, uh, perhaps uh, keen observers would think uh, Kuntura would be the one that would be in the latter stages for the Greek team. But you have to say, Georgia Du is doing a great job. And it's often the case when two fences from the same country start doing well together, it brings things on. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, uh, sorry, I just got a bit distracted there by that incredible parry post. Such a late parry. I think Georgie Du was going for a tempo, a lunge into preparation, realised it wasn't on, and then just took a parry in the very last second. And she calls for another video now, uh, the Greek athlete. But you're right about those two Greek women sabreurs. They've both just exploded onto the scene in the last 18 months, and they met each other actually in the top 16 in Athens, I think it was, and... Uh, Georgie Du lost out on that one and missed out on her first last date, but this um, competition here is more than made up for that. And she's right back in this match now. Well, the referee, Jang, is sticking with his decision there. And uh, it is Navarro who re-establishes the lead. And now she, Navarro's just become a little bit more composed again. She's realised what yeah. her mistake was. She just prepared quite aggressively, nice. but didn't commit. And then held up her attack, pushed all the way down the piece and finished well, I think. If Araceli Navarro keeps this mindset, then she'll she'll close this fight out. If Shorter she starts steps, to rush again, a little exactly bit more short, gentle with the feet. watching what's happening, not trying to go too early. Yeah. But, uh, so but a bit more open eyes, as uh, as you say, they they don't. Uh, you can take a closed eyes approach sometimes and uh, just choose what you're going to do and go for it. Uh, just being a little bit more reactive to uh, what your opponent's doing seems to be the way that's working for the Spaniard now. Absolutely right. Oh, that's a beautiful stop Whoa. hit. Beautiful. Very good control of distance and time there. She waited to the last second. She knew, again, another technical error actually from Georgia. As she started the attack, she just lifted her arm and opened up the target and gave a bit of time to the Spanish fencer. And hovering over the back line as well, 14 metre piece. If you step over that back of the piece with uh, two feet, you lose a hit and now switches on to the attack, goes right down to the other end of the piece. You've almost got to think of it like a table, fencing on a tabletop. And if you step over with both feet, you're going to fall off the table. Absolutely. I think if I stepped off with one foot, I would fall <laughs> off the table. But uh, What you do in your dining room is your own concern. <laughs> very <laughs> and Arafeli's just taken control of this. She let Giorgiardi back into the match. It got to nine all. But since that moment, Arafeli's realised her mistake. She's held up, controlled her preparation, been far more um, observant of what her opponent was doing, not trying to dominate and take the first preparation. Actually, the first preparation, and well, then she closes out with exactly the same kind of preparation. Yeah, Small skips sharp in. steps, absolutely. Yeah, skips in, stops. It stops the uh, Greek athlete from stepping in as well, and she takes the fight. Uh, it uh, was a great performance to start with, a little wobble in the middle, but Araceli Navarro is through to the semi finals here in Orleans and gets a big hug from her coach. Also, nice to see Nikos, the Greek coach 
applauding Aristides' victory. He's an absolute gentleman, one of the nicest guys on the circuit, and doing a fantastic job um, over in Athens with Giugiardi. And I'm sure, again, we're going to see her, just like we were saying about Chloe Fox, determine this won't be her last appearance in the top eight. And she's had a great day. She'll be disappointed right now, but she's had a great day and will climb a number of places in the world rankings. Yeah, the world of women's sailor is opening up and uh, a number of the European countries are really stepping up where perhaps uh, we haven't seen them so often before, Spain being one of those. But we move on to our last quarter-final and it's an all-French affair.